Let's go ahead and do a dialogue for this part. Of course, in the dialogue, we can't really do much on body language, but I still want to cover some vocabulary for this last part that is very useful for your negotiation English use. So let's take a look at a negotiation situation. So Fred says, if you can give us just a bit more discount on price, I'm sure we can come to an agreement. And Alex responds, let me give you a breakdown of this situation. Now, we can't see body language here, but if you were to see it, you would say something like, let, let me give you a breakdown. Let me give you a breakdown. Let me show you the pieces. So you can use your hand gestures to help express this. Okay, shoot, go. Since we pay the shipping, our margin is only 12%. There is no way we can afford to lower the price. No way. You see, so you can use your hands, you can pull back your body to make that body language. And Fred says, we understand that, but this is pretty normal for our suppliers. And Alex responds by saying, well, it is not normal for our clients, and it is a big charge we must take. And Fred says, you will have to make a sharp decrease to your price, or we will have to reject your offer we have cheaper options, so we have alternatives. And Alex says, this is the lowest we can offer. Remember, our product is the most reliable on the market. You want the best and we have it. Um, I like this negotiation because now we've had a lot of experience talking about the different types of negotiation and clearly what we have is these two sides are trying to make their stands very clear. They're trying to hold on and not give anything up. They're very much into this a distributive idea that if I lose something you're going to gain it if you gain it I lose it if I gain it you lose it they don't want to lose anything so they're taking their stands they're trying to make the other side feel or make the other side understand or think they understand what are the target prices and what is the resistance point point? and Fred says why don't we split the difference just right down the middle and Alex says I would like to do that but we really are already losing money on this deal. So remember, splitting right down the middle, giving up half and half, does not always lead to what people want. The demand for your product is in decline. Now here, Fred tries to change the outcome variables a little bit by saying, actually, your product is hard to sell. And Alex says, that is an extraordinary thing to say. That is not our perspective at all. So here we have a lot of um, communication that is prime for body language because we can lean back, we can lean forward, we can say, oh, it's extraordinary, it's hard to believe. And no, no, that's not true. So we're trying to uh, insert or uh, uh, assert certain ideas and then the other side is trying to block them and then reassert other ideas. Body language can be very helpful. Fred says, it is clear there has been a sharp drop in sales, a drop. Alex says, did you consider the sales always decline during the summer and then increase in the winter? They always decline and then increase in the winter. Overall, demand is steady. Fred responds by saying, as I mentioned, we can get a better discount price from other suppliers. And Alex says, you know as well as I do, you cannot meet our quality standards. We have the best quality product in this class. And Fred responds with, the alternative suppliers are very attractive on both quality and price. This is a very real option for us. And Alex says, I can ask my boss but I already know that this is his rock bottom price. We will lose valuable time if we don't close the deal now. And Fred wraps up by saying, I need a time out to consider this. I need a time out. Okay, so that dialogue is really a perfect situation, a perfect example of these two sides are both working on the assumption of a distributive negotiation. They're trying to make each side understand what is the target and what is the resistance. 
And of course, remember, when you try to make the other side see your target, and when you try to make your other side see the resistance, this may not be true, because you know they're gonna push you, right? So you wanna get as far away as you can and then just hold on for as long as you can. And by using body language here, back and forth, both sides can convey the message that they're serious. Now, alternatively, on the other side, if I'm watching your body language, if I'm looking at your body language, and when I'm seeing you, you say, this is my rock bottom price, we cannot go any further. If I look at you and I see your body language is not really saying the same thing, your body language is not saying this is the rock bottom, you're not pulling back saying this is the bottom, but rather your body language tells me something else. This can give me a clue that this is not really your resistance point. This is not really rock bottom like you say. So in this way, we use body language to convey a message, but we also want to watch very carefully. What's the other side doing? What's their body language? How are they saying things? What are they doing with their hands? What are they doing with their gestures to express this? Is it really true? Okay, so let's continue a little bit here. Alex says, let's take a coffee break, and Fred says, that's fine. So again, I just reinforce this idea. Some body language is good. You don't want to go overboard and be too crazy, though, obviously, because that would be a little bit funny. Okay, let's continue on then after our little break. Alex says, after consideration, we just can't go any lower. We can't go any lower. And Fred says, my boss will never accept that. Maybe we should put off the price question for now. If there is no objection, I suggest we move on to the question of payment. Now what Fred's doing here is Fred is log rolling. He's saying, look, this point is just really hard. I don't want to give in. You don't want to give in. We both are kind of focused on this distributive idea. We're very stuck. What can we do? Do we keep negotiating? Do we keep talking about this one point? And maybe what we could do then is say, look, we're stuck. Let's go to something else. Let's change the topic to another part. Maybe let's talk about something different. And if we talk about something different, then we keep the negotiation going. And later we come back to this question. So this is called log rolling or keep things moving. And Alex says, agreed. We can revisit the price question later. Revisit means come back to it later. And Fred says, sales can be improved with more advertising. And Alex responds, that is a very good idea. And Fred comes up with this idea, but advertising is expensive. We can offer an internet advertising campa campaign only if you pay half the cost. And Alex responds with, if the advertising can show how our product is better quality, then sales could increase. This is mutually beneficial. We can accept that. So we do see here that there's an idea they can move forward on. Not so, not so hard to move forward, so we changed to this topic. This could stop the deterioration in market demand. And Alex says again, we cannot accept this assumption. You are just trying to push us down on price. We cannot go any lower. Fred keeps saying, our advertising campaign will help you increase market demand. I know your market demand is low. I'm sure it's low. And Alex keeps saying, no, no, market demand is good. You don't need to keep saying that. It's not true. Market demand is good. And Fred says, well, we see the trend clearly in our sales figures. And Alex responds with, I would like to see that data. And Fred says, that is not so simple since it's confidential. So here again. We're trying to make assertions. We're trying to change some outcomes, change the parameters. I would like to sell your product, but nobody wants to buy it. If nobody wants to buy it, you have to lower the price so I can you know, pay and then take the risk that nobody will buy, right? And then the other side says, no, no, lots of people want to buy it. This is not true. Okay, can you show me the information? Oh, no, no, that's secret information. I can't show you. So both sides trying to affect each other side's evaluation of the outcome 
of the resistance point of the target prices.